Hello, we're live. Hi, my name is Melanie Dizon. I'm the Director of Education and Content at the Davis Finney Foundation. And I'm really happy to be here today with Sid and Pat Donahue. How are you guys doing? Good. We're doing great. Good. So glad to have you. It took a while to get us scheduled. You guys have crazy schedules. Um, and uh, so everyone, thank you for being here. And definitely um, throw your questions for Pat and Sid in the live chat area here so we can answer them. And uh, a lot of our, a lot of the people in our community know who you are, but I would love for you to introduce yourselves for those who are new. So Sid, why don't you tell us who you are and how you found and got involved with the Davis Finney Foundation? Okay. Um, well, I'm Sydney Donahue. This is my husband, Pat Donahue. My husband, Pat. We live, we live in Las Vegas, Nevada. We've been involved with the Finney Foundation for a long time. Um, I think our initially we had gone, I think it was 2011, we, when we were writing Ragbri, we, we were raising money that year for the Davis Finney Foundation. And so that was our introduction to the Davis Finney Foundation. And the whole message of living well, it just resonated with me and both of us. And we've just, mm -hmm. we've been gung-ho ever since. Yeah, it's been great. That's a, that's a long time, 12 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 13, 12 years. Yeah. Pat, um, what about you? Well, I, I, ju I was just thinking about the, you know, uh, at Ragbri, um, uh, sitting, we are sitting underneath a tree on, on a farm and they brought this video to us. Um, there, there was a representative from the foundation with our group. We were riding with the pedaling for Parkinson's group with J Dr. Jay Albert. Oh, yeah. And, and, um, and they brought this video from Davis thanking us or thanking Sydney and, and her fellow PD people um, for doing what they were doing, for writing and for representing the tribe and, and all of that. And I just remember that it um, affected me to the point that I got choked up and got teary wow. underneath the tree drinking milk and peanut butter. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. That's great. So Sid, um, Tell us about your life, you know, before Parkinson's and what you were up to and your diagnosis. Okay. Um, well, before PD, I was a literacy specialist at an elementary school, loved my job. It was a great job. And, um, and we were, we were busy parents. We had five kids. Um, we had six kids, five kids living with us, lots of teenagers at the same time. And I mean, we were just busy. I, at one point, I think right after we were married, I was working full time, getting my master's degree and we were just gotten married and we're raising five kids. So, oh my gosh. Yeah. We were yeah. super. What was the, what was the range of ages? Um, I think uh, it was five and five and 13. Wow. Sorry. Okay. So I, I call it uh, from 19, 1985 was the oldest, it was the year of the birth, and then the youngest was 1995. Oh, wow. So do the math. I don't. Um, <laughs> difficult. Yeah. And, and They're all in their 30s and 20s now. So I started, no I think at first, well, he noticed my symptoms first. When we were in Washington, D.C. in 2006, my son had graduated. We went to Washington, D.C., and he noticed I wasn't, my arm wasn't swinging. Yeah, it was said, August 6, 2006. Yeah, and he's like, why, why are you walking like that? And I'm like, like what? Gosh, I mean, you know what? I swear this is probably the most interesting, yeah. like, thing that everybody goes through because I hear it right from everybody, but how do you not know that your arm is not swinging is the most I don't fascinating know. thing ever. Right. But no yeah. one does, but the other person does. Yeah. Right. Right. And then after shortly after that, I started getting a, like a, a twitchy finger on my right hand. And then I just started having a really hard time. Like I writing on the whiteboard, I, I couldn't, I couldn't hold my hand up and write. I had to hold, my left hand or my left hand would hold my right hand and that's how I could write on the board. And, and that was just the beginning of 
four years of trying to find out what was going on because it took four years to get diagnosed. What, what, what did you initially do? What kind, did you go to a doctor or did you just say, well, this must be stress and busyness? And No, I went to a doctor pretty quickly. I went to just a general doctor who referred me to a neurologist. And then I got referred for MRIs. I got referred to a hand doctor. I got referred to a neurosurgeon. I just, I just kept getting, you know, I, I call it the, you know, wild goose chase. Hmm. Wow. And finally, after a couple of years, my doctor said something like, well, I think you might have Parkinsonism. And I'm like, what does that even mean? So I looked it up and I looked up the difference between Parkinson's disease and Parkinsonism. And I said, I have Parkinson's disease. And, um, but he wouldn't diagnose me. So I went to the Cleveland Clinic here in town and paid cash because they didn't take my insurance. And I got diagnosed immediately. And the, and the main reason I did that was because I wanted to, during my search on the internet to get information, I found out about J. Albert's study. And I'm like, well, if, it can, if I can find something to help my Parkinson's that doesn't involve medication, I'm all for it. So that's when I started the, um, the, the, what is it? The forced exercise. There, yeah. The forced exercise study. Yeah. And then we went to Ragbri and then, then the rest is history. Wow. Um, when you, when you talk to your, like when you think about your original doctors, was it, yeah. do you think it was your age? Do you think it was that you were a woman? Like, what do you think was that they just, I mean, it seems like those are pretty, you know, characteristic. You know, issues. it's weird. Yeah. It's weird because when I went to the Cleveland clinic and then I had to go back to him because they didn't take my insurance. And he said to me, well, why didn't you tell me you wanted to be diagnosed? I would have diagnosed you with Parkinson's. And I'm like, but you're the doctor. Yeah. No. So yeah, that was my first doctor. I had a second doctor and now I have a third doctor and third three time is the charm. Oh, good. Three. You're happy with this current doctor. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Excellent. And are they close by? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So Pat, tell me what's going on in your head as this is unfolding with, with Sid over the couple of years. You know, I was in the middle of trying to, um, you know, as, as you mentioned, we, we were blending a family and all of that when this was going on. And I, I'm in a new market. I'm not from Las Vegas. I, I moved here to, to be with Sydney and um, we met on the internet. Yeah. Um, Where were you living? I was living up the, just up the road in St. George, Utah. I was working at a new oh. school. I, my background is radio and television um, advertising. And then I, I did some stints and, you know, I, I moved around moved around a lot there I had custody of my children my daughters and um, I, I I had a house in St. George and I moved there so that they could um, have some stability and um, and so that uh, that lasted for a little bit and then I met Sydney and um, and I have a picture of where we met oh it's the uh, it's the the uh, phone jack in my wall I had dialed <laughs> I love it. This is, I've known you guys for what, five some years now. Yeah. And I, I'm getting all the good juicy stories good, juicy right now. Stuff. Yeah. But, um, but after, I mean, when, all I know is that Sydney was researching like a mad dog. It was like, something's going on. We knew something was going on with her arm with the, you know, with the rigidity and, um, and all of that was new. We, and the doctor, Oh, the doctor, the, the neurologist. I, I, I actually wrote a, um, a review for him before I really knew him. I wrote a review on Yelp and it wasn't a kind one. Um, and now I could write a, a bigger one, but I, I don't go there anymore. But um, the uh, and it's always good to get second opinions. It's always good to, to change doctors if it if it means um, a better, better course of treatment. But um, all I know is that she was researching like crazy. She was on the internet all the time and she was finding out, she was learning more about Parkinson's than I think some of the doctors knew about Parkinson's. And, and uh, it was, um, it was, I just sat back and watched. Um, I, I didn't know what to do really. Yeah. I didn't uh, understand it completely. It took me a while, it took me a long time to uh, come to grips with uh, 
what Parkinson's was, what it meant for now and, the, and in the future. Um, I, I, I had a lot of um, um, ups and downs with it. And, um, and if anybody ever wants to just ask me about it, you know, feel free. I'll talk. I just not going to talk about it on this, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a lot, right? Newly yeah. married, six kids, you know, the, the, as, a, as a new care partner, as you know, with a, without it having really been defined at the time, my, my, I've always been able to go out and fix things. Hmm. You know, my daughter, my daughters need help. I can fix it. You know, if Sydney needs the lawn mode. I can go do that. And, you know, if the windshield wipers need to be put on, I can find somebody that knows how to do it. <laughs> I, but there, I can, you know, the idea is that, you know, we're wired to fix things. And this was her diagnosis. It's her disease. It's her thing. And I can't fix it. And that was the biggest thing that once I got over that hurdle, it's been, it's been, a um, you know, you hear it all the time. Uh, Parkinson's has changed our lives. Um, we didn't, we don't, we don't know. We didn't know where we were going with it, but the people that we've met, the, the places we've been, the things we've been able to do um, since that diagnosis, since being able to stand up on our feet and, and, and run, um, I, I, we can't, we can't really put a price on any of that because it's been so tremendous. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I our that... best friend, unf unfortunately it's Parkinson's and it's a nasty little, little bugger. Um, but, but it's brought a whole lot of greatness and goodness to our lives. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are probably saying, okay, well, what did you do? Because they're still in that Phase. They're still in the, I haven't gotten, oh, I haven't accepted it. I haven't gotten through that hurdle. So what, what did that take? Well, for me, I guess initially, I, because it took four years, when I finally got diagnosed, I was over the hurdle. I wanted to know mm -hmm. what was going on. And then I just kind of took the bull by the horns and went with it. So initially I was okay. And I, and I was getting involved. We, we were both getting involved in cycling and Davis Finney Foundation, Pedaling for Parkinson's. Um, we get involved in local organizations. And so oh, I was really busy. And 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 I, I kind of feel like I had a really good 10 years. The last couple of years have been hard. Hmm. And that's where I see, at least for me, that's where the transition is, is has become difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we just, we just got on our bike and got on the tandem and we went and we were going all over the place. Yeah, we did. And the, the, the but, but going back to the, the question, you know, Sydney's was handled all of that questioning. You know, she knew what she, ne what she needed to do and she did it. And uh, now she's going through a, a transition of, you know, a little bit more of, of stuff. But what I had to go through in learning of that it's not my, it's not mine to fix. Um, I, I found, I found, um, the greatest help is by finding, I found a, a, a counselor that could talk to me in a way that I could listen. And she was also a cyclist. So that helped. And, uh, she also had a blended family, which helped. And, um, but, um, I mean, to this day, even though she doesn't take our insurance anymore, um, <laughs> we're still, I mean, I, I tell Sydney, we should have them over for dinner because her husband's a chiropractor and, <laughs> and she's a, a counselor and, and uh, yeah, we, we can get it all handled at dinner. But, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, but anyway, no, it's just that that was part. I mean, I have like I, t I tell Sydney all the time, I have the tools now to navigate things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I need a little bit of a find, you know, a little bit of a tune up yeah, and, um, and everything. But, but, um, I've been in 2012, 2013, I did not have the tools to navigate this, this, um, journey. I think um, that is such an important piece. I was talking to somebody, uh, last week about something similar is, uh, uh you know, aside from the factual information, here's, motor symptoms, here are non-motor symptoms, here's medication, here's this, here's that. 
is how do like can we send them out with a bunch of tools can we tell them how to breathe how to understand how to talk mm -hmm. through it how to um deal with the negative and the scary and the uncertainty and the future tripping and all of those thoughts um because that's that's the paralyzing part in a lot of mm -hmm. ways right um as a in a relationship as a couple you I mean you're both you're both Sydney, you're feeling it all the time. But Pat, this is also your life, right? Yeah. Um, Nancy, uh, Terry P said, it, this is a couple's disease. And I thought, yes, you know, that's right. There's not one person handling this. So oh. Oh. those tools are so important. And I, I love that you said you just went to a counselor, you got what you needed. And I hope that that inspires other people yeah. who are watching to do the same. And I wish we had more counselors who were equipped with understanding around chronic disease. And I, I think we're making an effort to make more of that happen, but, um, you know, get the help, get the help. So Sid, what, what was your initial treatment regimen? Did you, um, aside, I know you were riding your bike and all of that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but when did you start medication and what kind of medication did you start? Well, initially I started on, um, Mirapex before I was even diagnosed. Oh, the doctor said, here, take this. And, oh, and see if it worked or see if you were. <laughs> I don't know. He yeah, just yeah. He gave me mirror packs. And I took it and, I, and, you know, I had, he and he didn't explain to me about impulse control behaviors. I think it was just kind of coming out at that time. So I had impulse control behaviors and I drove everybody around here crazy, <laughs> and including my children. Uh. And it was just, it's just the strangest thing because when I went off the Maripex, it all went away. And I'm like, why did I do that? It was just, it was strange. Um, and then I started on Carbidopa Levodopa. Um, and I think I was on Carbidopa Levodopa Azelec for quite a few years. And then, um, you know, they, they kept trying to add, you know, I started to get dyskinesia. And they added some other like Gokovri, which I had did not respond to well mm. at all. Um, but a lot of people do. Yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah. I, I don't have anything bad to say about that. That particular drug works really well, but not it didn't for me. Um, I got, and then I had DBS surgery, which also worked well for a while. But, you know, now I have what's called, well, I, I always had biphasic dyskinesia. And um, which is a little bit different than what, what typically people have is what's called peak dose dyskinesia. And peak dose is, is treated very differently than, than biphasic. And um, so I'm... Can, I'm, can you explain that peak dose? And yeah, then yeah. Be different? Well, peak dose is when you take your medication and your medication is at its, its, its highest level. It's the most, you know, dopamine in your brain. And so it, it kind of overshoots and it gives you these, it kind of like this movements. Um, did, by phase, it can, I, I can't explain why it does this because I don't understand it. But it happens both when my medication kicks in and when my medication wears off. And it's very different. It's not as smooth going like this. It's very jerky movements <clears throat> with my foot and my arm. And I'll just, I'll just go like this. You can't see my foot. Um, and it happens usually every time I take my medication. Um, but I, I have found that if I can get my next dose in without going off, without starting, I can, I can have a smooth transition. And I still have dyskinesia every morning because that's, kicking in and I still have it at night because that's wearing off. Um, so my hope is that, you know, I have a, quite a few friends who have that, um, sub, who've done the study for the st subcutaneous pump. And, and I hate to put everything in one basket, but right now that's the only basket I have. Mm -hmm. When um, did you, when did you get DBS? Four years ago. And when you did that, was it um, helpful for a while? And was that because you could go off most of your medication or? Um, I, it took me a while to get the settings right. It took me really until 
you yeah. don't want to, you know, just say anything. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Well, I think, it's, I mean, I think it's good for people I, I Some people here, it's like, oh, it's perfect right out of the gate. You well, know? yeah, the, 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 you've, we've all seen the videos of people having miraculous yeah. events with DBS and, and, uh, and I, I thought, you know, as, a, as, as her partner and sitting there in the doctor's office, um, when they turned her on, I, I was waiting for that. And I saw immediately the lack of, I mean, her rigidity yeah, handled. It did have. She, she had, was more fluent in her walking. She yeah. was able to move and that, that, that funny arm went away. But the dyskinesia, the, the, the tremors and everything, it didn't. And, well, the and, term, it did help with the tremors. Well, the, 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 the programming it in because of the biphasic yeah. or diphasic, um, the, uh, has been a challenge her battery her battery is um designed to last three to what three to five years mm -hmm. and they say it'll last hers will last 20 because my, because if she settings. doesn't use that much electric you know, like, that much power on it yeah my settings are really low um my when <clears throat> my new doctor moved to town i guess it was three years ago three years yeah. ago he he programmed me and he had me in a really good program for a couple years and i don't know what happened it was a pandemic or something but everything changed and now i can't be in that program because i get too disconnected i have another program that i put myself in and um and after my meds kick in i'm not disconnected anymore so um yeah, it, it's been it's been a tough couple of years trying to get through. I mean, we we believe and understand the the benefits of uh, DBS, and um, and and it's the right thing for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I think it still is the right thing for Sydney. Um, it's just the expectations, the the outcome wasn't didn't meet the expectation. Yeah. Um, and and that doesn't mean we don't we, that doesn't mean we regret any. We have no regrets on it. Yeah. And also, I mean, it sounds like you, your expectations were totally reasonable based mm. on your symptoms and what you were looking for. So it wasn't like you had some thing that it wasn't going to be able to deal with in a lot of situations. It's, it can handle this. Right. And it just didn't for you. No. And, and the reason why I'm looking into the subcutaneous pump is because it gives a steady stream of levodopa. Into your, into your intestine and then, you know, so you've got that steady stream and that's typically, it's, that's really hard to do with pills. Uh-huh. Really difficult to do with pills. Yeah. And, um, are you, how many, like how many pills are you taking a day at this point? Um, about 15. Okay. So a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Not 15 different kinds of pills. Right. <laughs> well, and then I also take, I also take an anti-anxiety and anti-depressant because I, I, the pandemic was hard on me. Yeah. I was going to ask, did you have any of those, you know, looking back while I was depressed and anxious for a long time before my, di my diagnosis, or has it been more mm -hmm. since you were diagnosed or this wasn't really an issue until it wasn't an issue at oh. all until wow. the last couple of years. It really wasn't. I was totally happy. I was totally fine. What do you think it's, it was like, what do you think about the, I mean, naturally the pandemic was, but, but did something in particular um, happen during I that period? I think it was a combination of the pandemic and getting isolated and just my Parkinson's progressing mm -hmm. because it, it does. I mean, I'm kind of at the time where it does start to progress and that just happened to have a worldwide predict pandemic at the same time right so i mean i've i've spent the last year really really working hard to pull out of the mm -hmm. depression to pull out of the anxiety to get myself involved I, i've worked really hard to do that what and, does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis <laughs> well <laughs> so we have this routine um i have to come into this i we have our bedroom and I have to come into here because he gets up and goes to work and he'll wake me up. So I come in here, but it's also because 
when I take my medication in the morning, I get really dyskinetic. And for whatever, well, the couch is more comfortable for me because I can push my feet up against the side of it. So I, I do that and it <clears throat> takes, you know, I take my medication and then um, I'll do Amy Says Dance almost every day. And that's, that, that keeps me sane and alive. And then from there, I, I tried to do volunteering at my, the school I used to work at, and that didn't work out. So I, I'm, I'm doing, um, still, we're still doing other things like with the Parkinson, with Parkinson's Place right. Las Vegas, with the Davis Finney So we, we, as, you know, we're not only are we ambassadors for the Finney Foundation, but we're also the, the, um, I hate the term, but the co, we're co-founders of, um, you know, we helped organize the uh, Parkinson's Place Las Vegas, which is a 501c3 here in Las Vegas. We found that we found uh, Las Vegas was very challenged and disjointed in the Parkinson's community. And and um, we all we so we there's uh, seven of us came together and, and formed uh, Parkinson's Place. And um, we're coming up. One of the things that keeps us busy right now is uh, on March 11th is our our sixth annual uh, movement movement fair. If um, if you if you've ever been to a Davis Finney uh, Victory Summit, that's what it's that's how we we uh, we 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 set it up based on the same the same program, yeah. and um, it's been tremendous and and been a lot of success and everything. But it keeps us busy. Um, we've added another event where we get we bring people with Parkinson's together to the local ballpark. We have the uh, Oakland A's have their uh, minor league team here in town. And the, the, um, the ballpark is a state of the art ballpark and that they just opened up. It even has a swimming pool in center field. What? <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, but the, uh, but we have, we, we started, um, um, we, we'd get the, one of the up, you know, upper decks area, upper deck areas where our, um, you know, we get together up there and have dinner and, and uh, watch a ball game and socialize and, and everything. Nice. Um, <clears throat> so another yeah. thing I, I just was thinking while he was talking yeah. about another thing that happened during the pandemic is that I, I found a lot. There was a lot of loss in my life. Um, we lost Lily. We lost Carl. Carl we lost a friend, Cheryl. And then just in October, we lost a good friend, named Chris, who was on our board. Um, plus, our board members, three of them, three, who are my just my close friends, moved out of state. I had another friend who I've known who was a, she was a research coordinator when I did my study at the Cleveland Clinic, and she moved. And so I just kind of felt all this loss. Yeah. And so I had to, I have to realize that change happens you know you can't you, you can't keep things always the same you have to you have to move along with the change because it happens yeah so. what um so many places to go initially let's go with um the kids how how did you communicate this with the kids how did they deal with it what was you know what was that whole situation like um I don't think we ever did like sit him down. Like, I think I had something. I remember I had something on the table that had to do with Parkinson's and my, and they knew that something was going on. Um, and my son looked at it and he says, do you have Parkinson's disease? And I said, well, yes, I do. I've been diagnosed. Um, and so they, they've been okay. They, 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 they do try and help. But you know they're they're they've got busy lives too. Um, we have three of them that live here in town, and three that don't live here in town. Oh, nice! And you have a bunch of grandkids, right? Oh, we have a lot of grandkids. How many? Eleven. Oh my gosh! Yeah, amazing. And how many of them are in town? Two. Oh. Just two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, so my oldest granddaughter, who's five, she just turned five. And for a couple of years, I was able to watch Your oldest her. granddaughter? Our oldest granddaughter. No, our oldest granddaughter is 18, graduating well, from high school. Yeah, sorry. 
Um, Sorry, Jolie. <laughs> so uh, the oldest granddaughter here in town. In town, yes. Okay. Is five, and um, and I was able to watch her for a couple of years, and that was, you know, it was hard because she is just like her dad. She was all over the place. She's a tornado. We love her. This cute little tornado you ever saw. <laughs> But, you know, it was hard, but it was just so fun. And I can't do that anymore. And that, that, those are the things that change that you have to accept that I, I'm trying to move forward with is, is some of the things that I just can't do anymore. Right. Yeah. What happened? Both of you obviously were in careers and different than is happening currently. So Pat, you have a pretty big story around that. And then Sid, what about you? When did you stop work and how was that for you? Um, I stopped working in 2014. Um, I guess what's that? Three years after I got, no, four years after I got diagnosed. I took the last year off though. Um, so I didn't tell anybody at the school for a real, you know, for a couple of years. But I remember I was going to be, I was working as a literacy specialist and one of my responsibilities was to do the testing for the school. So I was working with the assistant principal and I thought I've got to tell her because she's going to notice something's going on with my small motor skills. So I told her and she says, you have to tell your principal. And I said, no, I said, you know, anyway. So she just literally grabbed me one day and pulled me into his office. And she sat me down and she said, Sydney has something to tell you. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. So I just said, well, I've been going to a lot of doctor's offices, the doctor appointments, and it appears I have Parkinson's disease. And his face just dropped. And it scared me because his face just dropped. And I went, and I, I didn't know how to react, but he he actually had an uncle who had Parkinson's disease. Hmm. So he was looking at his uncle and thinking, you know, this is what my future is going to be. Um, so after that, and this is kind of a cute story. So my, my principal is from Glenwood, Iowa. The first year we went to Ragbri, it started in Glenwood, Iowa. So I went in and I said, do you know where Glenwood, Iowa is? Because I knew he's from there. He goes, no. he goes, yeah, I was born there. And so I said, well, I'm going to Ragbri. Or, or no, I said, I'm going to Ragbri this year. And he goes, well, where does it start? And I said, Glenwood. And he says, that's where I grew up. So anyway, we went to Ragbri that year. I came back. And at the meetings at the first of the school year, um, he, he said, now, Sydney, didn't you go to my hometown? I said, yeah, I did. He goes, tell everybody why you went to my hometown. And that was my introduction to them. That was kind of like a way to get me to talk about what was going on. Oh. So oh. anyway, but I, I lasted a couple years, but then it's, it was just too much. I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it was a multitasking it wasn't physical it was a, it was a cognitive it was a yeah. multitasking that was killing me yeah there's so much in the classroom yeah yeah it's like having doing a hundred things at once right and now pat you're actually in the classroom so what happened yeah. with you well I, I was working when she was diagnosed i was working in radio here in in town and um and i i, I realized that you know, the, any type of sales job, whether it's in radio or selling ball bearings, there's going to be some stress to it. And uh, we, as we talked a lot, and we needed to not bring stress into the home. And so, um, <clears throat> so I needed to make a change. So we, we, um, uh, she introduced me to her provider that provides her with her retirement plans and insurance and so forth that, that school teachers get. And so I, I went to, I left radio and I dove into selling insurance and selling retirement plans to school teachers. Oh. It got me into it. It, it. it took me to almost every school, every major school in Las Vegas, in the Valley here, Las Vegas in Henderson. Um, got to know a lot of people. And then um, 
that wasn't gonna that wasn't gonna th that career change wasn't going to sustain ourselves with Sydney leaving the her profession as a teacher. And uh, the, the, the number one thing, the number one concern was uh, being insurance. And um, on our way to Ragbri that first year, there was a there in two thousand well in two thousand fifteen on the way to Ragbri there was a um, um, an advertisement at the airport for uh, they were looking for teachers here in Clark County, and um, and so I I looked into it and um, anyway within within uh, by. Um, so in August of, of 2015, I was, a, I was a long term sub. Anybody can be a teacher if they become a substitute. Um, and, 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 but not just, but you got to be, I don't know, it, you, you got to really want to do it and to, to be able to, to make it worth your while. But um, I, I, I became a long term sub, got my feet wet, and then um, was in a, uh, I, I had to, um, I went back to school. I have a, a, I had to get a, a, well, I ended up getting a master's degree in special education at UNLV. And, um, and then, and then as a regular, regular teacher, um, licensed uh, teacher, I went and taught in elementary school, which I swore I'd never do, but I did. And, um, and now I, now I, I, I love my position at, um, at, at my high school and uh, work with the, uh, uh, I, I work with kids that uh, ha are a little bit slower at, at learning. They have a little bit harder time learning uh, and, and comprehending, you know, math and reading and so forth. And um, it's been, I've been doing that now for seven years and uh, it's been great. Wow. And the summers are off. So right? I get to spend time with you and everybody up there. Yeah. 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 And, you know, more, more time with, Sydney during the day. It's no, absolutely. It's, always there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty great. Yeah. What a what an interesting switch. I'm sure that was not what either of you had thought. <laughs> no, no, it was. It, I mean, it's it's always a challenge. Um, but those things, you know, the, we find the 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 silver lining in things. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, even with Sydney's challenge the last couple of years, it's been okay. You know, it's going to be June here soon. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then you know the, the, we we ride we ride with the Finney Foundation quite a bit with fundraising and, and everything and and um, we haven't been able to do all of the things like Iron Horse and things like that because of the, the because of the calendar. Well, and we so we did um, the Tour to Victory in July. Well, they changed that on the calendar, <laughs> right. so we can't do that now. Oh no, that's in, that's in May, and that's during during finals and. Um, and then, um, but they changed at, at work. They changed the um, the calendar for our, our student calendar, where the last day of school is on a Monday. My last day is on a Tuesday, and Iron Horse is on a Saturday, the following Saturday. So there you go. we'll be able to go up to Durango, which I, I I make I have fun with my students because they think that they that they're the only Durango High School. Because oh, that's right. where I teach here is Durango High School. And, and uh, I say, hey, I'm going to be going up to Durango High School, <laughs> Durango. <laughs> nice. And uh, and stuff anyway. But then we'll do um, tour to Zona in March and and uh, ride Rag -ride? in June. Rag ride not so much because of her yeah. ability to camp. Yeah, um, I right. <clears throat> it's too much. Yeah, um, it's too we much we time. have ridden we have ridden in Iowa every year except for 2020 since 2011 and this will be our first year that we probably won't make it to iowa mm -hmm. we didn't in 2020 because of the pandemic but yeah. 2021 we 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 did a ride uh, we created a ride called the called the dream ride where we rode from um <clears throat> we rode from the white Sox stadium in 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 chicago went over to the uh um the cubs field um wrigley and then over to the Field of Dreams in Dyersville, Iowa. Oh wow! And so that was a way of getting out and creating something when we couldn't, when there was nothing, we created something, and it, yeah. was, it was great. With there was about eight of us that that um, that participated in that, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, and then last year we we um, we helped start start the uh, beginnings of uh, Parkinson's Place, Iowa. 
oh. um, taking off of what we're doing here in Las Vegas and working with uh, Kristen Meldrum there in, in, in Des Moines. And um, so we, we were there last year and did a little bit of writing and a little bit, uh, a lot of fairy pie. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Do a little bit. Right. Well, so I have to ask you um, massive career change, symptom change, kids, grandkids moving this, and that, how, how do you guys do it together as a couple? What is, what is some of the secrets? What are some of the secrets to what you figured out? This is, uh, this is a lot. Well, you know, I mean, going back when I couldn't fix anything, I would, I would blame and I would, I would get my, my temper, my, my, everything would get in the way. Um, I'm Irish, so I blame it on that. Um, I don't have a PD card to throw out, but, um, <laughs> but the, um, the, the, the counselor gave me tools and, you know, as, as we, as you know, like in every relationship, we have our ups and downs and, and, and things that go, that go uh, south and so forth. But, but it's just an always reminding, like, like just, um, what was it last night? I, w I wasn't feeling right yesterday. You know, I wasn't feeling tuned in and, um, and I got upset a little bit about some things, you know, I get, I get upset with people on the freeway. I get upset with people at Costco or whatever. And, um, and, uh, and then, and then ultimately, I sometimes I get upset with Sydney, you know, if she's drinking her cup wrong or if she's making a noise or I, I don't know, I'm weird. But um, but I have to tell her right away that, hey, I'm going through something. You you're you're fine. It's me. And, you know, some of the tools that, that we continue well, to work on, you, you you're going to override me. So no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it, it, you know, when you, they say care partners, it yeah. really is care partners because, you know, some days he needs me to be stronger. And some days I need him to be stronger yeah. some days. So there's a lot of give and take. She did push me down the stairs last week, though. I didn't push him down the stairs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I fell down the st a, a stair carrying uh, a bed. Oh. The bed that she insisted on me take. This is about decluttering, okay? So, um, <clears throat> she wanted the bed. She wanted the bed in our bedroom out so that she could have more room on the f to the floor, closer to the floor. So I brought a bed down from upstairs and took the big bed up, up, back up, and replaced the little bed. Well, that didn't work. So we got rid of. I took the little bed, put it in the garage, went to the store. We bought a new bed. Now she now the big bed is up and upstairs and she wants to get rid of it and she wants it got she wants it gotten rid of tonight. I mean this is a week ago Friday. Right. And um I'm going, okay. So I go up and I take it apart and it's gonna be out of there. And carrying it down the stairs, I slipped and and I there was a I landed straight on my leg and, and there was a pop. And I'm going, oh great. And I'm thinking, okay, I've got my I've got my riding buddies I'm riding with in the morning, not to mention Tour de Zona. How am I gonna what what am I gonna I'm I'm not gonna be oh and it as it swelled fine. up and as it started to hurt, I couldn't walk. And then I got up in the I mean all night long. I mean at two in the morning I went and got on the Peloton to see if I could if I could ride. <laughs> was able to pedal, but not put any weight on it. Oh. Anyway. So we got, I mean, she's feeling terrible, but I'm not mad at her. And yeah. I had to under, I needed her to understand that, you know, this is something I could be mad at you because there's a lot of things that could have been done different, but I'm not mad at you. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and then we get through it and it turns out that there was no break or torn tear, or just strained. Mm -hmm. Told me to take it easy. So I rode a hundred miles last week, you know, <laughs> but it's not... I, I have a hard time. Yeah. So Sid, are you, um, so you dance, you, are you, you're still riding and what uh, you ride, you guys ride on the tandem if you ride, right? Sid? Yeah. We haven't mm -hmm. been riding that much because of my, the dyskinesia. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm at the point now I, where I know when I can start I, I have about a two-hour window, so, uh -huh. but it's been cold. Here but you have a Peloton, right? Can you ride that? Yeah. 
I can write that. Um, and we're, and I dance. Well, I usually just stretch in the morning on Amy Says Dance. And then um, we're, we're hoping to get a Rock City Boxing opened oh, on this nice. side of town. We have one on the other side of town. And that should be coming up pretty soon. So I'm going to have to up my game a mm -hmm. lot with exercise. Because I didn't, I didn't exercise for a, a long time. And that was mainly because of the depression and anxiety. Yeah. And you've been on a anti-anxiety for a couple of years at this point? or I've been on an antidepressant for a couple of years. They added an anti-anxiety and that, that's helped too. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. So. Yeah. And do you go to a, a counselor or therapist as well? Or? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And would you like that? That helps. Like, yeah, it does. It's the same one. He, he okay. Because yeah. we trust her. Yeah. Well, that's great. So you're looking forward to the potential of the subcutaneous. Yes, I'm hoping. Um, I, you know, I, I, t when I initially mentioned it to my doctor, he said, "Well, I don't know if that's going to work for you because." You're so sensitive to the medication. But then after, you know, he, I talked to him, went and saw, went to him again. He said, you know, I think you're right. He says, I think you just need a continuous dose of, a, of medication coming in. And, uh -huh. and hopefully that will work itself out. And would you keep the DBS? Yeah, I don't know. I got thinking about that today. I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, my settings are so low. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I turn it off or, or what. Mm -hmm. I, I I would I haven't to thought be about continued. It. Yeah, to be continued. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well that's great. Well, I, I'm really grateful to have you guys on and um you've been such a huge, huge uh part of the Davis Finney Foundation and a huge part of Team DPF and all, everything that we do. And as ambassadors, you've been uh, phenomenal with our community. Pat, you are with us every month at our care partner meetup. Amazing. Um, and said you're just involved in everything and we're so grateful. Uh, before we leave, what's one thing that you want people to know about what they can do to live well? What both for both of you? Um, well, I think you have to keep a, a good attitude. If that, I mean, that's so general. But you have to keep your mind in the right place. Um, get it there. And, and for me, it was super easy the first 10 years. It was really easy. The last couple of years, it's been hard. But I have to keep re remembering that, you know, if, I, if you let it go, you're just, you're just going to deteriorate. You know, mm -hmm. and I could say, you know, something like, you know, exercise, which is important. But I think that connections are just as important as exercise. And that's what I've learned the last couple of years. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I, 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 um, <clears throat> of course, the, the, the main thing that I always like to share is that there's hope. Uh, there's a lot of challenges. Don't get us wrong. It's, it's, it's a long road. Um, but there's hope when whatever it is, you know, exercise, you know, it's do what you can do. Don't worry about seeing, the, you know, the people with Parkinson's on, on Facebook who and they're dear friends of ours who can do all sorts of fantastic and remarkable athletic things. Um, the, but you just do what you, and they'll tell, and they'll tell you, they'll tell you, do what you can do. You know, our, our, our the, the exercise is very important socialization is very important but there's hope and it's it's not it's not an end all it's not an end end run it's a it's a lifelong journey and um yeah. it's just keep keep us a, a stiff upper lip and yeah and and go with it because there i mean we we were at we were at a celebration of life for our friend who passed away um and uh her husband just wanted everybody to know about his wife and about all of the things that she'd done and everything. And, and, um, and the hope that it gave us the hope that it, 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 it that, um, 
that we were able to share with others. Um, the, the, the people that we meet, the, the things that we're able to do. Um, and and we, we just, I mean, uh, yeah, we're, we're ambassadors and we, we get to be around people all the time. Um, reach out to us, reach out to others in your area. Um, be a, be, come and be a part. Um, even, if you, even if we don't um, interact in person, we can do things. Um, I just I just got an email last night from somebody in town. He had listened to the um, um, Living with Parkinson's, the February one where they talked about love and relationships. And he looked me up and he sent me a an a message and I got back to him. So hopefully, you know, we'll be meeting him soon. Yeah. We met we met yesterday with a care partner from from Denver. Oh, we met. He's he's in town, and he wanted to meet. And we met met with him and shared our stories. And yeah, and, oh, that's um, great. You know, and so it's. I mean, I know that we we I, everything that we do. When I say we, I mean the the foundation, everybody in your in your local in your local communities and everything, bring so much together to help everybody. Yeah. We're not in it for us. We're in it for everybody. I mean, we and we. We, we should be all in to help each other. And, um, and, and that's why, that's why we, yeah, that gives us the energy to, to keep going. <laughs> because I can tell you two weeks ago, I'm going, why are we doing all this? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and now re-energized and, and, um, and we're, it's, it's, it's great stuff. Yeah. Great. Well, and, and just, um, you know, I think we need to also, you know, acknowledge just how our family, how families are affected by mm -hmm. this, because you know your children and your your. We both have our our mothers are both still alive. We're affected by it, um, and the children and grandchildren. I haven't. I think we've talked to the older Jenny's older kids. I think mm -hmm. Julian kind of understands it, but the younger ones. I'm trying to find a book or something to share with them mm. because I know there's one out there because if they get to an age and I get to a point where, you know, she loves to jump on me oh, she yeah. loves to and jump and, and, you know, I tend to fall over. <laughs> yep. But yeah. yeah. Family. They're all good. We had our, our kids are between 18 and, and brand new. We have two 11 year olds, uh, nine year olds, five year olds. How old is Abe and Adam? I'll, I'll get them wrong. He's six, <laughs> seven. I don't anyway, know. they're, they're all growing. Yeah. yeah. Holly's going to be two. Oh. St. Patrick's Day. They didn't name her Patrick. Oh. Patrice. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, um, well, that's good. Yeah. I'm community and connections and family and, uh, just doing what you can. I mean, giving back is such a big thing. It's uh, it's it's really hard to kind of get stuck when you're <clears throat> being of service and helping other people. And you guys yeah. do that so much. So thank you. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, you can see Pat and Sid pretty much anytime we're doing stuff. So uh, <laughs> stay tuned. And thank you so right. much, everybody. Thank you, Mel. We'll see you. Bye-bye.